ramifications of Monsanto's best-selling weed killer, Roundup. The active ingredient of Roundup is called glyphosate, and it was patented as an herbicide by Monsanto in 1974. But 10 years earlier, it was patented as a broad-spectrum chelator. Now, chelation is the molecular level of hugging and not letting go. The way that it kills weeds is it makes the nutrients unavailable to the plant so it weakens the defenses of the plant. Then it promotes the diseases in the soil which end up killing the plant. Now, this means that plants treated with Roundup have a reduction in available nutrients. They're weak and they're sick. The animals that eat the nutrient deficient plants, they become nutrient deficient and weak and sick. Then we eat the animals and the plants that are nutrient deficient and we may become weak and sick. In addition, the residues of the Roundup in the plant can end up in our bodies where they can chelate, hug some of the nutrients that are in our bodies, making them less available as well. In a those deficiencies are very well documented as being uh, factors in animal diseases as well as in human diseases. Basically, if you had one trace mineral and you were looking at a specific disease, you would see uh, an animal survive and respond to treatment, this type of thing. If you got two trace minerals that were deficient, you had a more virulent, in other words, a more aggressive disease pattern, even with the same identical disease. And when you got to the three elements that were severely deficient, then things really got serious. Uh, to the point that they probably wouldn't respond to treatment and we'd have a very, very high death loss. What do livestock in the United States eat? Roundup ready crops, Roundup ready soy, corn, cottonseed, canola meal, sugar beet pulp, and now alfalfa. Ready crops. And those crops are nutrient deficient and have high concentrations of Roundup. The glyphosate problem has a, a number of issues for us, and one of the very sad side effects of glyphosate are birth defects. In the towns where people were workers on the farm, particularly the soybean farms, we had as much as 70 times increase in the number of birth defects in these sprayed areas. And in fact, research of looking at studies around the world show that glyphosate is in fact genotoxic, which means it does directly cause birth defects. And that doesn't necessarily mean exposure directly to the body. In other words, the person was underneath the sprayer and got sprayed. So exposure can also be ingestion because that is an exposure of the body to glyphosate. Lab animals fed Roundup Ready soy have had serious reproductive disorders. In mice, the testicles changed, including damage to the young sperm cells. In rats, there were changes in the uterus and ovaries. The DNA functioned differently in the embryo offspring of mice. When female rats were fed genetically modified soy, more than half of their babies died within three weeks. The babies were also smaller and could not reproduce. When mice were fed genetically modified Roundup Ready and BT corn, they had fewer babies and smaller babies. Preliminary evidence that's not yet published can be even worse. In rats, the testicles change from pink to blue. In hamsters by the third generation, most lost the ability to have babies. Some had hair growing in their mouths. This is astounding research, and yet it's never followed up. Typically, the industry distorts or denies the findings, pretending that there's no problem. Where we used to have one fertility clinic for uh, people, we now have an average of 14. In our community, uh, where I live, within 100 miles of my house, there's 50 infertility clinics. 20 years ago, there probably wasn't any. There's a virtual epidemic of reproductive disorders 
in the livestock in the U.S. Some veterinarians and scientists started examining the aborted fetal tissue of livestock that had miscarriages. And they found an organism that was new to science. It was tiny, the size of a virus, but it had some properties of a fungus. They had never seen it before. We're still not quite sure what it is. We have the DNA now that's in the process of being analyzed, sequenced, so that we can put a name on it. So it's a very small entity. We know that it's fairly heat tolerant, but that it can cause reproductive failure. In fact, they've taken the organism and exposed it to a pregnant chicken in a laboratory. And it killed the embryo within 48 hours. This new organism is in high concentrations of soy and corn products that have been sprayed with Roundup. In particular, it's in high concentrations on diseased plants where the diseases are known to be created by Roundup. Secretary Vilsack, as governor of Iowa years earlier, was awarded Biotech Governor of the Year. He's now in charge of agriculture in the United States. Dr. Don Huber sent a letter to Secretary Vilsack describing this organism and describing it as an emergency. I felt that it would be irresponsible for me as a scientist not to alert the Secretary of Agriculture to the serious nature of the situation as it was developing. Dr. Huber wrote, for the past 40 years, I have been a scientist in the professional and military agencies that evaluate and prepare for natural and man-made biological threats, including germ warfare and disease outbreaks. Based on this experience, I believe the threat we are facing from this pathogen is unique and of a high-risk status. In layman's terms, it should be treated as an emergency. He asked the secretary to hold off on the approval of Roundup Ready Alfalfa because that would increase the use of Roundup in the United States, and if Roundup were linked to this organism, it would pour fuel onto this fire. A few weeks after the letter was received, Huber got a call from the USDA, and he gave them the names of some scientists and veterinarians to talk to. Six months later, they still hadn't been infected. Unfortunately, the USDA is completely ignoring the problems with Roundup. They just approved Roundup Ready Alfalfa in 2011, as well as Roundup Ready Kentucky Bluegrass. Let's review what we have so far. Genetic engineering transfers genes between species. The process itself creates mutations throughout the DNA, which can produce new allergens, toxins, and other nasties. The inserted genes and their proteins may trigger inflammation, which might promote numerous problems such as digestive disorders, allergies, diabetes, autoimmune disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, kidney disease, thyroid disease, and heart attacks. Genetically engineered BT corn produces an insecticide, which may break holes in our intestinal walls. If so, experts link gut permeability to allergies, autism, and premature aging, as well as other disorders such as autoimmune disease, cancer, asthma, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and others. Most GM plants are engineered to survive doses of Roundup herbicide. Roundup steals nutrients, which can lead to nutrient-deficient plants, animals, and humans. Roundup can also cause birth defects and other reproductive disorders. Lab animals that ate Roundup-ready crops lost a large number of offspring. Roundup is also linked to infertility, which may be from disrupted hormones, nutrient deficiency, or a brand new organism. FDA scientists had warned that GMOs were dangerous, but their boss was a Monsanto man. Monsanto sells Roundup and most GM seeds. The FDA doesn't require any studies and doesn't monitor any health issues linked to GMOs. Monsanto scientists took cow genes and put them into E. coli bacteria so that the bacteria produces a hormone for the cow. It's injected into cows to increase milk supply. Nicknamed crack for cows, it revs up their metabolism. Now it also produces more mastitis, a painful udder infection. So there's more pus in the milk and more antibiotics in the milk and more bovine growth hormone in the milk. But what's really concerning to doctors is the increase of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. 